And uh, I loaded. Is this the, the manifestation? I loaded. The, I loaded the dishwasher, <gasps> so I deserve a round of applause. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, and welcome to the Savage Podcast. I'm Rose, also known as Cheap Lazy Vegan on YouTube. And I'm Daniel, one of your favorite guest stars on Cheap Lazy Vegan's YouTube channel. We're two friends who love to talk about the latest trending topics. So get comfortable and join us while we give our savage take on just about everything. You are currently listening to the previous episode of this podcast, but if you would like to listen to this week's episode and get some exclusive content, go over to patreon.com slash the savage podcast. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the savage podcast. The savage Savage podcast. Podcast. We Uh, have a very special guest today. (laughs) He's hidden and he may... He may pop up at some point. He may appear at some point. He may appear. <laughs> I am currently dog sitting for one of my friends. No, you weren't supposed to tell them. Oh. I wanted to be a surprise. Shit. I can cut it out. <laughs> it's fine. You know, I just like to live a little, you know, have a little fun sometimes, you know, Daniel. Know are we going to are we going to show him? No, I think he's passed out. Is he passed out? Oh. <laughs> anyway, he's sleeping under the pillow. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Anyway, guys, welcome back to another episode. It is a lovely, dark oh, evening. God. It's um, a dark winter evening, although it's been very warm. It, it has. It's been so nice. Global like, warming. Thank you. Can we talk about how like November has been ridiculous? Well, for us, I don't yeah. know about other places. I mean, guys, <laughs> tell us what's the weather been like in your in your hometown? Has it been hot? Has it been cold? Yeah. The pro- The thing is, with us, it's like. It, global warming i know it sounds bad but like in terms of like weather it kind of works in our favor because other than you know obviously extreme things yeah like wildfires yeah and- i think i think for us it's more the winters are definitely getting less harsh for sure like that's that's mm-hmm. no matter like i've noticed the and last summers are hotter but it, because our summers weren't like ever that hot it's not like unbearable. it's not that bad yeah. whereas other people are probably you know. Yeah. Well, you get like places like Spain where their summers were historically exactly. like in the mid 30s or like late 30s. And yeah. Now it's getting into the 40s. And like that's yeah. unbearable, right? Like, exactly. Whereas for us, it was like our summers were usually like a nice kind of like 27, 28. And now. Yeah, at, at most usually. Yeah, yeah. And now it's like we'll always have a couple weeks in July or August that are well into the 30s. So yeah, mm-hmm. for us, it's not as bad, mm-hmm. but you know, obviously for the globe. It is. And it's sad because like there's, there's animals like, you know, the polar bears and the, you oh, know, the, the animals that live in, especially in the Arctic. It's been a few months, Daniel, since we've done the doom and gloom. God damn. So we're allowed. Think, we're allowed. we we'll do a, a little bit of doom. <laughs> Some people might disagree. I don't know. What's <laughs> going, I don't know what's going on with this stand. Like it just is Daniel. not working for me and I'm just not happy. Um, <laughs> Daniel, what else would you like to complain about today? I think we, because I think, it's I think, been, uh, you know. I think we need some new equipment or something. You well, know? you know, our Daniel, we're in a fucking, we're in a depression. We're in a recession. We're in a recession. God damn, guys. Speaking be- of depression and recession and needing money, guys, check out our Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> Patreon. Patreon.com. Slash the Savage Podcast. Links are always in the show notes, in the description. Mm-hmm. It starts as little as only $3 a month and you get bonus content every mm-hmm. single month. You get ad-free content, so mm-hmm. no pesky ads. Mm-hmm. And you get every episode a week earlier than everybody else. Yes. So check it out, you guys. Okay? Yeah. Help us get um, new equipment. Help us get new equipment because <laughs> Daniel likes to complain about Apparently it. Apparently, I'm having a situation. Okay. <laughs> what are you doing? This is upside down. I don't know anymore. There we go. That seems better. Is that better? Mm-hmm. Okay. I don't know at this point. <laughs> Just don't like, you know, flail flail about too much, you know? Speak for yourself. I know you like to flail. Let's not talk about all the times you dis- <laughs> you accidentally disconnect the microphone and restart the whole goddamn thing. Oh, God. This is a very sensitive topic oh, for God Daniel. Damn, it is. Oh my Daniel. I'm, just, I'm, just, <laughs> I'm not having I'm not having a good day. Like, why is it not sending? Ah, oh, I'm so annoyed. Like it just Okay, what did you do? It's not Today is my selfish. Okay. Okay. So talk to me, Rose. What's going on? There we go. I figured it out, guys. It's it's There fine. you go. We figured it out. Here's mm-hmm. the thing, guys. Here's something that me and Daniel do. Uh we take turns being selfish. Yeah. But you know where I got that from, right? <laughs> where did you get it from? Shit's you told great. me, yeah. 
Oh. Because there's a, there's an epic scene in Shit's Creek, guys. You know, I'm uh, obsessed. I need to rewatch the whole. You need to rewatch it. Is it still on Netflix? No, I think it's on. I don't know what it's, it's on. It's on like now. Prime or maybe. Yeah, I'll check. But I need to rewatch it because it's. I'm just like I fucking love the show. Um, but there's a an episode where David or, or I think it's I can't remember if it's David asking Alexis to do something or Alexis asking David, and then they're like refusing, and then he's like, no. <clears throat> no, I think it was David. And he goes, it's my turn to take a selfish. And <laughs> Which she's like, I love. And she's like, no, I, you took a selfish last time. And he's like, no, <laughs> do I need to remind you Saudi Arabian Prince 19, whatever fucking, I saved you from that. And then she's like, oh, okay. So it was his turn for a selfish. Yes. Okay. That's where I got So today from. is my turn for a selfish. <laughs> seems to be always your turn rose lately excuse me um so what's, what's going on rose what, what's, so bas- uh, well it's not even selfish it's about we we basically take turns being uh depressed <laughs> and <laughs> like, complaining about life angry uh, <laughs> so if one of us is angry depressed complaining about life the other one cannot be or no but this is what the other one has to support but cannot also <laughs> mm. But cannot also be in the same mindset. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Because then it's a dangerous place and we will spiral. <laughs> <laughs> no, today I was just like, you know, I was just, I've been feeling like this in the last few days mm-hmm. where I'm just like being an adult in 2023 oh. is exhausting. Preach Rose. Like it's so tiring just mm. dealing with every little thing. Now, Maybe it's also because we live alone. I was going to say, yeah. I think, I think a big, well, not a big part of it because obviously being in relationships brings its own pro- <laughs> problems. problems. <laughs> but I was just thinking about this too. Like, you know what? Thinking about us being single, we have to maintain a whole house by ourselves. Yeah. But then also some people might argue like, hey, if you had a partner, what if what if you were maintaining this house and your partner did fuck all? Well, then it I would wouldn't have worse. a partner I much know. longer. <laughs> I know. That's true. But like, you know, I was thinking how nice it would be to have somebody to like, you know. Spl- Just share the duties with. Share the duties. Split the cost of things. Yes. That is also like, very nice. The bills are going up. It's like, yeah, you know. know what? You pay for half. I know. We should get a fucking. This is the thing. Single people need so much more praise mm. than we get. Because the amount of shit we do by ourselves on our own think is of, like we need an award. Right. Think about it. Like I think about like not just the financial part of it, but the financial part of it. Like, OK, if I had a partner that was living with me, all my bills would be halved. Yes. Because exactly. like we would each be paying half the bills, half our share. Like if there's two of us. Yeah. And like how nice would that be? It would be very nice. I and could I could put more money into my investment portfolio. Yeah. I could save more. Yeah. For me, it's Ugh. more like, I mean, the money thing for sure. Yeah. But also, yeah, the time of just doing things, just have, like, if something goes wrong in my house, mm. I have to do it. Like, yeah. I have to deal with it. I have to call somebody. I have to do this. I have to do this. Whereas, like, if you have a partner, one of you has to do it, mm. right? It's not like you both have to do it. Like, imagine you're out <clears> and you get <throat> home and your boyfriend's like, hey, babe, uh, you know that that sink that was dripping? I fixed it for you. <laughs> Uh, one of the lights was out. I put a light in for you. Who's this and- unicorn I'm dating? <laughs> Jeez. And uh, I loaded. Is this the, the manifestation? I loaded. That you're doing the- I loaded the dishwasher, <gasps> so I deserve a round of applause. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I will give a round of applause. <laughs> Rose is the but queen, the queen of the slow clap. Oh my god. Okay, so that's okay. So that's one thing I've already been feeling. So, but that's just household, right? Yeah. Not only is there household, so obviously it's a bit harder when you're single mm. and you live alone. But there's that. And then there's like for women anyway, and men as well, but women more so, the maintenance of just beauty. Like just like it's tiring. Like makeup, having to do your nails, your fucking hair, your fucking like skincare, the 15 products that we need to buy. And I know people are going to say, well, you don't have to do it. You don't have to do any of it. Me, me, me. (laughs) Fuck you. Like, okay, so let me go live as an ugly person in this world that judges every woman based on her appearance. And that's Mm. like the most important thing about being a woman is fucking how hot we look. And we're not allowed to age either. You know, men are allowed to age, but women are not allowed to age. We have to look young for fucking ever. But it's a year right, though. Like, even even for me, I was like thinking about this the other day and I was like, okay, <clears throat> there's only so much time in a day, in a day. And I know we're like being a little bit complaining, mm-hmm. but like if you think about oh, it, yeah, it's like, guys, I'm sorry. These are all first world problems, they but are. they are some, they, ah! there's just so much, there's only so much time, right? Like yeah. I think about it. Okay. I'm at work Monday to Friday, generally at the office. Mm-hmm. So there's my whole day gone. Then <clears throat> got to keep up with the Joneses. So I got to go to the gym. <laughs> so I'm going to the gym. Yeah. We got to look hot. What are we going to do? Exactly. Go to the gym four to five times a week. <clears throat> 
Um, I go to, I do extracurricular. So we have the podcast that we do. Yes. We do run club. Like, it's just like, there's like so many things. And you have to see your friends a couple times a week. You yeah. have to go see your family go a few your times parents. a week. And it's like, it fills up your whole thing. And then you're just kind of like, yeah, so exactly. It's like everything. Like, and, and that's just main, maintenance. Mm. It's not even just like, I'm not like thriving here. I'm not yeah. like, oh my God, like I'm doing so well. It's like, that's just bare minimum maintenance, like working out, like mm. exercising, working so you can pay your fucking bills, you know? Yeah, doing all this shit. And the thing is, I don't even do half the shit that some girls do, right? Like some girls do, I don't know how people have the time. I genuinely am like, how is this even possible? Like people do the Botox and the fillers. That happens every few weeks. Yeah. Like for me, even just to keep up with my lashes, it's like a fucking you know, a shit show. Mm. And then my nails, you know, I have to get that done once in a while. And then like all of these things. And again, I know I don't have to do it, but again, when your value in society is very heavily based on how you look, you can't really tell people like, just don't do it. It's like that. That's like telling a guy, just, just don't be successful. Like don't make also, money. It's also not like, it's not like just about the value that society, well, I mean, part of it is, but I think also a part of it is like, you want to age gracefully, right? Like for me, I was thinking yeah, about yeah. this the other day and it's like, now I have a full on skincare routine that I'm doing. <laughs> so I'm using like the retinol and yeah. I have this special moisturizer that like helps like, you know, it's for 35 plus to help the signs oh, of God. aging and like, you know, making sure that I'm always wearing sunscreen and mm -hmm. like all this stuff. And it's like, I never used to worry about that so much in my twenties. Oh God. Yeah. I know. You know like, like that's the thing. I wish I did worry about it a little bit more, mm. but then now I think it, this, I started spiraling <laughs> because I'm right now I'm like starting to get like this hormonal acne that's happening in like my, my kind of jaw, my jawline. Mm. And like, I'm, I'm just like, cause I'm sitting here being like, I'm doing all the things. Okay. Like mm -hmm. I'm doing all the skincare, my fucking 15,000 step skincare routine. Mm. I'm putting on the sunscreen. I'm trying to eat healthy. I'm exercising. Yes. I'm drinking alcohol, but like, <laughs> that's, that's like, but the, that's the oh, socialize and potentially the meet one, people. Exactly. That's the one thing. And I'm like, even when I'm doing all of this shit, I'm getting these fucking breakouts all over my face. Damn. So now I'm just like, fuck, is this even worth it? Like, fuck this bullshit. <laughs> I know and it's even even just like thinking though and it's like too now going out like obviously you want to go out we and sound so complaining I know going yeah. out and like socializing because like obviously you know we're single we want to meet people and like we have to that be out involves, there on the streets we have to be on the streets guys okay? <laughs> we have to be we, out in the trenches we are literally in the trenches like, right now if we don't go out people will be like well you have to go out you have to put yourself out there so we're putting ourselves out there and the thing that sucks is like you have one too many drinks one night <laughs> well maybe this doesn't even have to be that many like, even if just like, you know, sometimes yeah. if I have like one, one too many, but like, not like I'm getting fucked up. Then the next day I feel like a lazy piece of shit all day. Yeah. And then I eat yeah. shit all day. I don't go to the gym. Like, for example, I went out on Saturday. It was a really fun night. Went for karaoke with some friends and I didn't, I didn't, I drank a bit, but I didn't mm -hmm. drink like an excessive amount. Like yeah. I got home, I felt fine. Like I didn't throw up or anything, yeah, yeah, yeah. which is a win. Um, <laughs> And then I woke up on Sunday and I was like, hey, I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to do all this stuff. Didn't do any of it. Because you like just a get lazy. lazy. Of, like I felt like a lazy piece of shit. I yeah. felt unmotivated. I was like, no. Nah. Exactly. So that's, an, and then you have one of those days and all of a sudden your whole it week spirals. is just fucking yeah. out then, of control. Then you're behind on laundry. You haven't <laughs> meal prepped. Exactly. You haven't done like X, Y, Z. It's like, oh my it's God. It's out of control. So there's, that's just the bare min minimum maintenance of mm. human life. Okay. And then not only, so today I was spiraling because. <laughs> So I'm already spiraling about this whole like, oh my God, just to like maintain some level of wellness, some mm. level of life, some level of, you know, whatever. I have to do like this gigantic list of duties and that's already like a lot. Yeah. And then today I was like dealing with like my dad's like, so I, I got my dad this printer and this ink is like running out like so fast and this ink is so fucking expensive. Why is ink so expensive? It's just as expensive as a printer. Like, I don't know. That's crazy. I saw printers for like $50. Okay. Like nowadays you could get a printer for $50, for $50, but the ink, the ink, like you to get the set of ink is like 50 something dollars. And so basically and how long would like an ink it, last? Well, for some reason. So we, I, anyway, I was on the call, uh, phone with this fucking printer company, mm -hmm. fucking Epson. Fuck you. Anyway. Oh yeah. Epson. <laughs> oh God. So we bought this and it, Again, my dad like doesn't print a lot and mm. he's like barely printed. I don't know if he, if he's ever printed in color, mm. but it's a color printer. Yeah. So there's the four colors in there and it ran out so fucking fast. Okay. So I got like, I, I think we replaced either like I replaced the black or whatever. I replaced mm. something and again, ran out again. I, I bought this thing less than a year ago. Okay. That's not normal. And then 
So then I just replaced the black and didn't replace the color because my dad doesn't need to print in color. Mm. So I just figured, okay, as long as we have the settings in black and white, it should be able to print. Nope. It says you still need to. It's like, oh, the ink cartridges are empty. Like it won't let us print. Uh, it won't let you. It won't let you like bypass it. It's like it That's, needs to have. Oh my god, that pisses me off so much. I was like, like I feel bad, but I was just like yelling. I was not yelling, but I was like, That's just the most because I asked. It's the so lady. stupid. I was like that. I was like, I was like, do I like? Why is it not printing the black and white? Mm. She's like, Oh, you have to like. Um, She's like, you have to change the, what she said, it initializes all the colors. I was like, I don't know what the fuck that means. Mm. I didn't say it like that, but I was like, I don't know what that means. You sure you didn't say it? (laughs) I don't know what the fuck that means. I was very close, but I was like, I don't know what that means. And she's like, and she just kept repeating the same thing. I was like, I, okay. When you repeat, I was like, can you explain what that means? Because when you keep repeating the same word, I'm not going to understand you all of a sudden, just because you keep saying it. She's like, that means we initiate, it initializes. I was like initializes what what does it initialize anyway basically long story short the apparently you can't just replace just the black ink you have to replace the whole thing which costs 50 dollars a pop so dumb which i'm just like that's the most ridiculous thing i've ever heard anyways i'm on the phone with this lady for like a fucking hour dealing with the shit Mm. barely dealt with it and then i had to go and like return something and again just like this is just dealing with broken things yeah things are breaking all the time well, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Even being a homeowner, it's like, there's so much everything to do. Everything is breaking. Everything is broken. Everything <laughs> is breaking. Things break everywhere. And then we have to deal with the consequences I know. and call people. And nowadays when people build like technology, it's mm. not as durable as before because mm. they're like not built to last. So like everything fucking breaks. Public service amount. And my humidifier is broken. <laughs> my humidifier broke. I c- contacted them and I was like, can you send me another one? Mm. They sent me another one and that one's leaking. <laughs> Fuck my fucking life. I can't deal with this anymore. I know. You're like, you know what? I quit. I, this exact, I, quit I just want to quit. Like I just, I mean, that sounds dark. That does sound, <laughs> but, not quit but life. Not quit but, like, but like, I just want, at one point I'm just going to snap and just live as like a fucking lep, boy, what's the word? Like leper? Mm. <laughs> what's the term? Or just like live and just like, like a not, nomad, not replace just, anything, no fucks given, like not just care. Like, but then that is like you know that's also that's not chaotic. a way of li- living. I know. Oh god. Like it is just guys. I know that was very like complainy, mm. and uh, clearly first world problems, obviously. Yes. But I do think that these are like obviously you know other than if you're starving and don't have shelter, that's yeah. obviously the worst thing ever, right? Like disease, war, you know all those things. Those are the worst things. But then if you take that aside and if you look at like the developed world, it's mm. not like we're happy, right? Like let's mm. just, let's call a spade a spade. Developed countries are not necessarily like super fucking happiest countries. Mm. One of the, the happiest country in the world is called, <clears throat> and I, I'm bringing this up because my parents were watching like YouTube videos about this today and it was, it was, it was like document, um, documentary. It wasn't a documentary, but like, it's like an Island, right? No, it's called, well, actually I don't, I think there's a few places that are okay. considered like happiest places, but one place is called Bhutan. Okay. It's like, I think it's near like, I want to say India or something. Mm. Um, but like, it's like one of the happier, like happier countries in the world. Mm. And basically they just live a very like simple life. Like yeah. they don't keep up, with the Joneses like yeah. they but I think I think that like historically if you think about like because at the end of the day we, as much as we like to like to be like we're superior we're an animal right like we mm. are animals and I think we've gotten to this point now where our lives are just so much like overstimulation mm-hmm. and over there's just too much going on yes. that we as like a physically like can't cope like there's yeah. just there's just like a million and one things all the time all the time yes. all the time and like I don't know like lately I've just been feeling also like exhausted yeah. I'm just like <laughs> yeah. I'm fucking exhausted I don't want to do this like but then if you don't do it it's like you're not builds. keeping up yeah it builds and also you're not keeping up with what everyone else is doing mm-hmm. that only works if you live in a society where nobody else is doing all the things that yeah. you're doing but if everyone else is doing all the things that you're doing then you're behind mm. you know if all the bitches are getting Botox and I'm not I'm behind this is true I'm already behind. What the fuck? God damn roses. <laughs> I, it's 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 tiring. Okay. So, anyways, um, I do think these are legitimate things because it is exhausting. This is why people in developed countries suffer significantly from mm. burnout. Because, do you th- do you, mm-hmm. do you think if like for example, just like throwing this out there, like if we were really really wealthy and didn't have to work, do you think that we would not have this issue? 
But how would we get wealthy in the first place? No, I know. Like but let's just we pretend. Like, okay. Let's just pretend. So we just like, like came it, to money. Yeah, like something or like happened. We have rich parents. Yes, and they just we inherited. <laughs> we inherited millions. We don't have to. Work. I think it would be easier for sure. Yeah, because then uh, you know, because then you can get someone to clean your house. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, you could get like a property. Like if we're super fucking wealthy, right? Yeah, yeah. You could get like a manager to like manage your property. True. Deal with all this bullshit. Basically, you can pay for people to do all this shit for you that you do yourself. Yeah. Like cleaning your house. That's like fucking. You know. That's so much work. Doing your laundry. Mm. Like, get a nanny. To be honest, getting a cleaner is one of the best investments. I know. The, the thing so is, I have a cleaner that comes right. once a month, and it is, like, a godsend. Because, <laughs> yeah. like, I still clean. Like, I <clears throat> not like I'm, like, a filthy person. Yeah. Like, I still clean, but I just don't do, like, a lot of the, like, deep cleans yeah. all the time. So it's so nice to have the cleaner come, and they just, like, clean the shit out of everything. <laughs> but sometimes I feel like when I get the cleaner, because, like, maybe you can pay for these services, but it's, like, because I have more, like, clutter, mm. it's, like... I have to clean. The clutter is my bigger issue. You have clutter? Daniel. Daniel. Today is my selfish. <laughs> Today is my selfish. Because okay. <laughs> the clutter is the bigger issue. Because like I, I, I vacuum like multiple times a week. Yeah. Okay. Like I, I vacuum. All, so it's, it's not really the deep cleaning that's necessarily mm. a huge issue for me. Mm. It's more so just like clutter piling up or mm. like random shit here, random shit there. So I have to clean that shit anyway if I have a cleaner. Yeah. So it kind of defeats the purpose for me. Like it doesn't defeat the purpose. It is nice. I've had I've had uh, a cleaner a few times. Yeah. It is nice, but it doesn't like I, I don't feel like it eliminates stress too much for Maybe me. Maybe it would force you to like organize. It would, but then it's not like I can pay for a cleaner like once a week. Like that yeah, would be ideal. No, true. That's true. You know what yeah. I mean? Like once a week would be ideal because then it's like that would be a maintenance thing. Like right. the entire time. Like I would like to maintain. Mm. Oh, anyway, God, that was like a major complaint. <laughs> that was a complaining session, guys. Oh my God. It's just like, I don't get how people do it all. And imagine having kids on top of it all. This is the thing. Like, I don't understand. Like, how? How? I don't know. How are y'all doing it? Well, they wouldn't go out like we do. Yeah, that's true. So, like, if I had a kid, we'd just be at home. All the time. <laughs> well, hopefully not all the time. Yeah, but, like, but, yeah, we'd a be lot of the time. Like, we wouldn't yeah. be, like, you know, Monday nights wouldn't be podcast nights. Like, yeah. Tuesday night well, this, we, Wednesday I would night. like to continue, Daniel. Even with the children screaming, children running around? Yes! Daniel, we, we have to still maintain some level of... You know, independent life. This is true. You can, Your life can't be about, I mean, maybe not in the very beginning. Like mm. when you have a child in the very beginning, maybe there needs to be a little bit more. Right. But I think like it's important to continue some well, semblance I, of norm- exactly. normalcy. I agree. And mm-hmm. I think the parents that are like the happiest generally do that. Like if, if, Absolutely. The, if parents become like just obsessed <clears throat> with their kids. It's very like, unhealthy. Yeah. And they don't have any life outside of that. Like I actually feel like they end up like later being like, I sacrifice too much for you. Exactly. And feeling like some kind of resentment. Yeah. Because then you it because then you alienate yourself from other people and then you don't and also come on you need to interact with friends and other adults like you can't yeah. just be like hang out with like your toddler all the time your children <laughs> anyway guys uh that was my rant it's it was nice to get that off my <laughs> chest <laughs> let us know what you think of this okay mm-hmm. am i just being a fucking spoiled little brat or is this legitimate what well, do you guys well you know think? what I, you know what i think rose i think in a little bit of time you're going to be on an island <laughs> on an island and, and you can oh i and, will be on an island and you can just chill i can just well, i know i know you said you're gonna be working but you're gonna be working and chilling i'll be working and chilling exactly yes. i need it but that's you know do i always have to go to an island to enjoy some peace <laughs> around here like do i have to spend thousands of dollars to enjoy a little bit of peace do you not enjoy peace in your house no because i'm always doing something <laughs> God damn, Rose. I don't know, Daniel. It'd be tiring. I can't do it all. I know. I'm exhausted. I am actually exhausted. I think it's because we like to do it all. I mean, you think I like to do everything. You do. You think I want to do everything. Well, except... Which I kind of do. Except for hanging out with me, you know? <gasps> Excuse <clears throat> me. That's... Daniel? <laughs> what are we Just doing right kidding. now, Daniel? That's true. That's true. Um, Daniel, I want to hang out with you all the time. You don't want to hang out with me all the time. Oh, God damn. Anyways, so... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I think, Rose, you need to take some time for yourself, which you're doing. <laughs> but Relax. then I'm behind on life. Come back. No, you won't I be I gotta back. hustle. You'll be hustling in, in the island. <laughs> no, are we not talking about the island? I think you about? mentioned it last time. Did I actually? I don't remember. I'm going to, guys. I'm going to an island. <laughs> an island somewhere. Yes. it's It was a random trip. Yeah. Basically, I'm staying with one of my friends. Yes. Anyways. Um, yeah. Okay, shall we get to the stories? We shall. Okay. So... What's the first story, Daniel? The first story we're going to talk about. 
This episode is brought to you by Compliment. Compliment Essential is the ultimate multivitamin made for and by plant based eaters. Optimize your health with the eight critical vitamins, minerals, and omega 3s, proven hard to get through a plant based diet alone all-in-one, easy-to-take capsule. I've been taking Compliment Essential for months now, and it makes it so easy to make sure I'm filling in all my nutrient gaps. If you're looking for the multivitamin for plant-based eaters, make sure to check out Compliment Essential. Go to lovecompliment.com. That's L-O-V-E-C-O-M-P-L-E-M-E-N-T.com and use code SAVAGEPODCAST, S-A-V-E-G, podcast, to get 15% off your order and save even more by subscribing so you never miss taking your vitamins. Be sure to check out their other awesome products like vegan protein powder, gut nurture, and daily greens. Once again, that's lovecompliment.com and use the code SAVAGEPODCAST to save 15% off compliment products. Thank you so much to Compliment for supporting this podcast. Thank you. Okay, guys. So I just saw this story. <clears throat> so I want to know, okay, because this story is a little bit controversial, although I think most people um, agree. Mm. Okay, but let me read the, can we read the title? So former Olympian Oscar Pistorius granted parole on murder conviction. He's South African, right? He's South African. Yeah. So guys, if you don't know the story, this was a huge story. This is like South Africa's fucking O.J. Simpson situation. Yes. So basically, Oscar Pistorius, who was like a really famous Olympian mm-hmm. because he was an amputee, right? Or mm. what do you call it? Like he, didn't have, he doesn't have legs. Like, yes, he was in the... Double amputee <clears throat> Olympic runner. There you go. Yeah. Yes. He was like a... He was <clears throat> in the Paralympics or whatever. And he was a huge star. Um, he's quite good looking. So I think he was like, you know, a lot of people liked him. Yeah. And he... That does help. It, it helps a lot. It helps Unfortunately, people, people, like, people very much, um, yeah. They love the attraction. I mean, they, they almost think you're not guilty if you're good looking. Well, this is just on a side note. Do you, do you remember <laughs> yeah. that weird show that was on yes, Netflix? Yes. Where they like took two different groups of people and they would show them like pictures of criminals. Yes. And like if they were good looking, every single time they gave them less of a sentence. Exactly. Every time. Even yeah. though it was the exact same scenario if they're good looking versus mm. bad looking, according to, you know, society. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Every single time it was like, oh, that's not so bad. So I could get away with a lot, couldn't I? Oh, God. <laughs> guys. Anyway. We don't encourage this behavior. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, so I guess, I mean, okay. So let's go down a little bit because I want to know. I can't remember when this happened. So double, um, double amputee. Olympic runner Oscar Pistorius was mm-hmm. granted parole Friday. Ten years. Okay. So I guess it's been ten years only. 10 years after shooting his girlfriend through a bathroom door at his house in South Africa in a killing that jolted the country and the athletics world. Mm -hmm. Oh, actually, I think this story, he did say he, like, I don't think it was debated that he shot his girlfriend. Yeah. But it was more so he said that he didn't mean to or he thought it was like a break in. Which, guys, I mean. What do you think, Daniel? Again, I don't know the whole situation, (laughs) right? But like some people might be like, oh, you know. But like, I have to say, like. Because they're in South Africa, right? And they're in South Africa. I feel like in South Africa there are more break-ins and stuff. So that is true. I'm not again. I'm not saying that I don't think that like you know maybe some other shit went down. I don't know, but like you know it's yeah. Anyway. Yeah, I mean I can't remember the exact details, but I do remember um, what do you call it? You know, looking into this, and I was kind of like, dude's guilty. Yeah, like, for sure. It like, seems suspicious. Yeah, there's been there's definitely some like been you know. Um, domestic violence i think it's from him before mm-hmm. so anyways anyway so this poor woman got yeah. shot killed yeah um and then he got convicted and so i guess you don't have a strong opinion on whether or not he was well no i can't remember right, the story that right, well and okay. i do remember also thinking for some reason that it was like fishy like there was some weirdness like he was being fishy yes right. so i do right. think that there's some more to it but yeah i just don't remember the full story what do you guys think guys do you mm-hmm. think that he is guilty Do you think that he is innocent? I think most people think he's guilty. Mm. So anyways, I mean, he was convicted in the court of law. And I guess now he is, he's been granted parole. Mm -hmm. Um, The parole conditions will be in place for five years. Is that how parole works? I have no idea. Jesus. I don't know. I guess I think with when you're on parole, right? Like you are technically 
you have uh, a parole officer. You have a parole officer. You have curfew. You have to report into your parole officer on a regular basis. Like they mon- it's like you're being monitored. Like your parole yeah. officer is in charge of like knowing where you are, what you're doing. But also the thing with parole is you often hear about people like recommitting offenses during parole. So this, well, that's the cu- that's the fear about parole, right? Yeah. Which is why certain people don't get parole. Yeah. So this says here the parole conditions will come. Uh, his parole would come with conditions, yeah. including that he will not leave the area of Pretoria, where I guess. It's like a city, and maybe it's in South Africa. Yeah. Oh, okay. Where he is set to live without permission from authorities. So he, I guess he's allowed to just live. Uh, Pistorius will also attend a program to deal with his anger issues. Um, maybe he did admit to doing it. I don't actually know. And will have to perform community service. Mm. So Pistorius, wow, he was young. He was 27 when he did this. Mm -hmm. So now he's 37, um, has been in jail since late 2014 for the Valentine's Day 2013 killing of model Riva Steenkamp. Um, so anyways, so, but then, yeah, there was also like stuff cause he was like on house arrest for a bit mm. and obviously cause he's a celebrity, you know, they get like a little bit more leeway. Preferential treatment. Mm-hmm. Um, so originally he was sentenced to about six years on a charge of culpable homicide, mm. but that ruling was characterized as shockingly lenient and more th- then doubled to 13 years and five months by, by South Africa's Supreme Court of Appeal. I think mm. there's also a little bit of, um, racial, preferential treatment here because it's south africa it's a little bit still a lot you know a lot of racial injustice over there um yeah he shot multiple times uh in the bath oh so she she was in the bathroom Mm. he's guilty for sure (laughs) there's no way she was in the bathroom um uh and then he shot multiple times Mm. okay and he claimed that he mistook the 29-year-old model and reality TV star for an intruder. What, in the bathroom? Mm-hmm. Maybe the intruder needed to take it off. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Anyways, so I guess he's out in, out on parole. He's been so, in prison for about uh, 10 years almost. Yeah. What do we think about God that? Damn, I don't know. I, 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 you know, has he been rehabilitated? Will he commit S- another offense? Clearly not if he has to do anger management. I don't know. I don't know how that works. Me neither. And also, I just don't think, you know, the current judicial system and having people in prison, like, I just, it's not good for your mental health anyway. Like, if I was, like, wrongly convicted, like, let's just say I was all of a sudden charged for some crazy thing and went to prison for, like, 10 years, like... I would be fucked up after. Like, that's true. There's no way that I would come out of prison being normal, you know? Mm. Um, But I also think that for celebrities, they they stay in, like, a specific type of prison. (laughs) Oh, God, you're going to kill (laughs) <laughs> like they won't be going to the one that you know n- other people are going to i think so like the one that i would end up in you know <laughs> not the celebrity <laughs> one the one where you yeah know, i mean i don't really know how that works the one where you don't drop the soap what does that mean well dropping the soap drop the soap ah, you gotta, you, stop it you gotta pick Stand it up over yeah <laughs> Daniel. that's what the, Daniel, you, not, you would not survive a day in prison. have you not heard the saying no. they're like don't drop the soap I've never heard that. That's like so common. They're really? like, go, if you go to prison, uh, people are like, yeah, well, bro. Well, you know, it's been a long time since I've been to prison. <laughs> They'll be like, yeah, bro, just be careful you don't drop the soap. My God. Because God. then you're, you know, <laughs> you're open for an invitation there, bro. Oh, my God. You're right. I would not. I would you not You would not do survive wh- an hour. Guys, I would not thrive in prison. No, you would not. You'd have to put on your straight man voice. I and would even be, that would not last very long. I would be, I would probably be someone's bitch. Oh, you'd definitely be someone's bitch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Fuck my life. <laughs> I would not thrive. I would not be thriving in that place, guys. My God. Oh, God. Scary. Uh, so anyways, yeah, I don't know. I mean, do I... I don't know anything about what kind of prison he was in, mm. but... Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm also on the same camp of like, you know, does it make sense to put people in prison and just like let them rot there for mm, years? Exactly. I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. I don't, I don't know, the know what the answer is either. I just but think, yeah. Sad story. Sad story. Fuck yeah. this man that killed his beautiful girlfriend. I know. Whole world ahead of you. Yeah. All right. Next story. <laughs> the one that Daniel <laughs> thinks this is very interesting. I don't think it's that <laughs> interesting. Okay. I was being very harsh and I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but you really want to talk about it. So let's go. Well, okay. So basically, <laughs> you know what? We're Fuck it. We're no, not going to no, talk no, about this story. No, let's talk about so it. So basically, guys... The USDA, which I think is a... What is the USDA? I think it's like a food thing in the US. Okay. Like it's a... <laughs> the USDA. <laughs> you know? 
Can you look it up on your phone? What is what, the USDA? USDA? I'm surprised it doesn't say here. I think it is a federal association. Like it's a. Let's see. I feel stupid, <laughs> guys. No, I mean, I don't think. Hold on. USDA. <clears throat> oh, United States Department of Agriculture. Right. There okay. you go. That okay. makes sense. Makes sense. So the USDA has announced. So apparently this year there was an abundant harvest of apples. <laughs> So they announced they're going to buy a hundred million dollars worth of fresh and processed apples. So some of it apparently was going to go bad as well. Okay. So the reason they bought it is they want to help like alleviate some of the um, food crisis, I guess that's going on. Okay. And they're going to be like donating a lot of the apples. Okay. To, like, food that's happy and news. Stuff. But again, on the flip side, because of the cost of inflation or the inflation costs and everything. Yeah. So I know that this happened in Canada. I'm sure it's happening in the U.S. as well. But like the food banks are so desperate for food right now mm. because they they have been inundated. I know in Ontario, right. they were saying like this one food bank actually is denying international students. So because... Oh, okay, wait. We're, we're going to talk about that. Yes. Because there's some because controversy. Because there is some people. Listen. Guys, I'm all for food banks. I'm all for social services. Mm -hmm. But I do think there are people this and this is a concern that a lot of people have with and this is one of the deterrents of people wanting to support social services because they're like someone's going to take advantage of the system. Someone's mm -hmm. going to take advantage, of, which I agree with. That is a problem. But I think do I think it's better to have those services and have a few bad apples taking advantage? Yes. Mm -hmm. I would rather have the services available for people that need them. Yeah. And, with the risk of having a few people that are just like mm. freeloading. Okay. But now I, I have heard that there are some international students, <clears throat> some of them from, you know, my culture, mm. shamefully enough that like they, they like, it's almost like, a they found like a system where they can, you know, get, a bunch of free food mm -hmm. from these food banks. So I heard that I can't remember someone that I know, like that person's friend or something was like telling people, yeah, you just have to do this and this and this and tell them this. And then they give you like a bag full of like food. You can like fill it up as much as you want. So people are just going in there that don't necessarily need the right. service. Right. You know, like I get that. Here's the thing. Do you know what the argument was though about international students and what was why it? they, and they're, 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 they usually come from, lots of money if you're an yeah. international student well, this, is, this, is, this is the thing this is and i i kind of see like where everyone's coming from in this but also so these food banks obviously this year guys and the last couple of years with the food inflation and the, just the cost of everything getting crazy yeah is the food banks can't keep up right like they're they have these services for people but they're like running out of food like yeah. there's just so many people that need it and it's becoming a crisis basically um so a couple of and it was in ontario a couple of these like agencies or whatever they decided like they were noticing that there was quite a lot of like international students right. foreign students coming and using the food banks now the argument for them to say why they said no international students is first of all it wasn't just, it was not just like international people. It was specifically international students. students. And the reason right. for this, right? Like if someone immigrated to Canada, that's a little different, right? But that's in, very different. International students, as part of the requirement to study in Canada, and quite often when you go to another country, if you're studying there, you have to prove that you have sufficient funds to cover your living costs. You have yes. to cover your international students pay higher tuition. So the they pay like higher. three times the tuition. Exactly. So it's it's a lot more expensive for students to, to study in uh, international places. So generally they do come from families with money. They come from, you know, they're not... They're not here struggling. Exactly. Generally. But then generally, are, yeah, you're right. Yeah. There are some that are like that there are definitely, you know, struggling a bit more than other people. Um, but but a general rule is that they're they're they come from wealthy families. And also the, the biggest argument about the food bank is that regardless of what their socioeconomic background is, when students come here to study, they have to prove sufficient right. funds. And if they have those funds, they should not be utilizing the food banks. Yes. But then the argument was also the funds that they have to prove that they have is equated to be like, I can't remember what it was, like $900 a month for the whole time they're there. Right. Which isn't enough to cover your living costs, food, and everything else with inflation. Yeah. So it's it's kind of a hard one. But it's like, we want these services for Canadians first and then international students yes. if there's anything left over. I mean, and I think that's fair. Like, listen, but this is what I don't get. Like, are there a ton of international students that are taking advantage of the system or because, well, the enough, one thing enough that, that it, right, they, they wanted it was, to ban it, them. Right. Because one issue, because the thing that I heard um, was like people that, so it was, it's not necessarily international students, but people that are here on a working holiday. Mm. And I initially, when I heard that, I like, my reaction was like, kind of like this right now where I'm mm. kind of like, that's kind of ridiculous. Like, mm -hmm. 
you know, they're just taking they're taking full adv- advantage of the system because yeah. you're right. It's the same thing with if you're going on a working holiday, you have to prove you have a certain amount of money in your bank account and you have to prove that you are, um, you know, like y- you have enough money basically yeah. to like, you know, not because the whole point that you prove that you have to prove that mm-hmm. is to prove that you're not going to go and take social uh, like charities yes. from the country because, you know, the, the country itself needs and this is the, across the board everywhere when mm. we went to the uk when i did a, a working holiday in the uk i also had to prove that i had a certain amount of money mm. and, and obviously you like you're right like something could happen like right there could be circumstances in which but from what i heard it seemed like there were multiple people taking advantage of the system and these aren't even international students and i think international students that's taking it even further because yeah. if you're here on a working holiday there is a chance that you're just working like a you know minimum wage job yeah and you know you might you might you might need it. You yeah. you do my I uh, you do might you might need mm-hmm. the food bank and that's fair. Like yeah. if you need it, I think you should use it, but I think it's just mm-hmm. like for people to kind of like make it seem like they're just the way that um they explained it was like, "Oh, it's like free food. Mm. We're getting free food." And it's like and especially even those international students, I forgot about this as well, but taking it a step further, you know when you come into the country as an international student, you're only allowed to work 20 hours a week maximum. Right. There's restrictions. Right. So you know coming into the country, you're right. not going to be able to get a full-time wage. You're not going to be able to do all of these things. <clears throat> so you have to have sufficient funds. Yeah, and I don't know. The international student thing, I think, unless it's like a very unique scenario, it mm. makes no sense to me. Because you're right. Like, I don't know any international student that doesn't come from a pretty wealthy background. I look at the look like when I did my MBA in the UK, there was definitely a range of people, yeah. but like most all the international students, all of the international students, they came from a lot of money. Exactly. Like a lot. Cause you have to be like, you can't, it's so expensive. Yeah. You're, tuition you're, already is expensive. Exactly. You're paying three times the tuition as everyone else. You are a lot of these, a lot of the individuals were coming from like, you know, countries that, you know, their dollar or their currency is like way weaker than the currency of where where you are. Like there was students from like Thailand and Vietnam and like all these places where, you know, their money, when you take it to like another country, it's just so much less. Yeah. Especially the UK. So that means they are like loaded in their original country. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know. That's weird. And also you could also argue that they don't have to be here. You know, they are like, I, and I hate saying this kind of stuff because yeah. it sounds like we're anti, like, like you know, we're obviously not anti-immigration, anti of any not. of those things. But it's like, if you're an international student, that is your choice to be there, to learn. This is like a privilege. Yeah. This is like an extra thing that like, this is not needed for your survival. You can mm. easily go back to your, you know, home country if you need it to. So it seems, it seems fair that they won't, that they're cracking down on the I think so yeah because you know especially <laughs> hello guys do you see Thomas uh-huh. look <laughs> this he's is our, our friend's co- dog he, he, he's, he's our, our co he's our new co-host oh. um anyway so that's yeah I mean it's quite a, wow we just that was a major um tangent Ta- that was a tangent speaking of another tangent that we're about to get into <laughs> what's the other tangent I mean it's not really a tangent we're just switching uh switching gears switching gears <laughs> but uh, uh this is really sad yeah, it is. So obviously with the whole, you know, Israel-Palestine situation, mm-hmm. there's been an increase in both like kind of, I don't, I don't know if it's actually like hate crimes, but there's definitely been an increase in anti-Semitism and anti, uh, or what is it called? Islamophobia, mm. you know, just, just racism in general on every angle has increased yeah. because, you know, of what's happening and, you know, maybe because of the media coverage or whatever it is. So um, the most recent thing that I heard was that three Palestinian college, college students were shot in Vermont and right now they're hospitalized in the ICU. So we don't know, like, their current situation. Um, but suspect, ICU is intensive care unit. Yeah, so, so it must be bad. N- yeah, I wouldn't. You're but not. You're not in there like, for like. Yeah, a, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're definitely not in there just for shits and giggles. Yeah. Like, but yeah, you, we don't know how bad it is. Um, but clearly, it's not. It's not great. Mm. So three were shot, and the suspect pleads not guilty. God damn. Scroll down, Daniels, for me. Mm-hmm. Oh God. Um. So, yeah. So he pleaded pleaded not guilty in court. Um, investigators say they're still working to determine the motive for the Saturday night incident. Um, blah, 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 blah. Like, when did this even happen? Mm-hmm. Um, it says Jason J. Eaton, 48, was arrested Sunday. And Monday he pleaded not guilty, blah, blah, blah. And then somebody said, although, uh, who said this? 
Although we do not yet have evidence to support a hate crime enhancement, I do want to be clear that there is no question this was a hateful act. Mm. Oh my God, this reminds me of another story that I kind of want to talk about after okay. this. Um, but yeah, so like, oh, I mean- Three 20 year old students. Yeah, like, 20. That's fucking traumatizing. That's fucking traumatizing. Exactly. Like you're 20 years old, you're at university or whatever school and fucking you get when shot. When did this happen? Let's see. Saturday, it said Saturday. Yeah, but like where? Like The shooting, uh, vic- the shooting victims are- uh, Hisham Awaranti. Hold on. Hisham Awartani. Yeah. Um, Kinan. Hold on. Kinan. Is that right? Kinan Ab- Abdel Hamid. Mm-hmm. Sorry if we're saying this wrong. Um, and Tassin Al Ahmed. So these are all students and. They were in Burlington to visit Hisham uh, Awartani's grandmother for Thanksgiving. Mm. And they were going on a walk before dinner when they were shot. Come on now. What the That f- is a 100% fuck. a hate crime. Yeah. Like, like why they're just you- out walking and exactly. all of a sudden they get like, shot. Why are you randomly shooting people? So, yeah, they were just going for a walk mm. before dinner when they were just shot. What the actual fuck? And three people shot? Come on. That is not. That is deliberate. I know. Well, and also like. This is the thing that scares me about the U.S. Like I fucking, know. you're going for a lovely little walk, I know. and people are fucking gun you down. Some crazy person's just gonna fucking yeah, yeah. I mean, and again, like this is right now. All of these hate crimes and all these things are getting mm. they're they're getting they're becoming more and more. Well, which listen is to so this. Crazy. Yeah, exactly. This attack came amid a report a reported rise in anti-Muslim mm. and anti-Arab bias incidents in the United States since the war between Israel and Hamas ignited last month. Yep. And like this also happened, you know, after 9-11, you know, when again, like this whole calling every brown person a terrorist Mm. sort of thing. So unreasonable people are going to think, oh, if you're, you know, looking a certain way, you're a terrorist. Yeah. Um, It's just crazy. So I guess two were wearing kefias, which Mm -hmm. I think are like some kind of thing that shows that they're like Arabic. Yeah. 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 so I don't. What is a kefia? Google it, Rose. Google I will. It. I will. Tell me what it be. Kefia. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Kefia. Kefia. Yeah, it's like that scarf thing that they were wearing. Right, yeah, right, so right. that okay. kind of indicates that they, you know, are and they were speaking a mixture of English and Arabic, mm-hmm. walking down a street, and then suddenly and randomly, without apparently any other motive, mm-hmm. attacked. So like it does. Oh, that's so fucking scary. It says they still haven't found evidence to meet the legal standard and distinction between a hateful act and a hate crime. What? But like what? I I'm sorry. Mm. A shot like shooting someone is not a hate crime. Mm. I'm so confused. Eden was arrested Sunday afternoon near the scene of the attack, Burlington police said. Um, authorities said Eden lives in an apartment building in front of the shooting scene, and a search of his home uncovered evidence that gave investigators probable cause that he was the shooter. Authorities found a semi automatic um, during the apartment search, a law enforcement officer said. Oh the God. gun was taken to the Bureau of the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, Explosive, Ballistic Lab. So they're probably doing some ballistics tests. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, because you know when you shoot a gun. It has a, it leaves a distinct mark yeah. on the bullet. So you can actually trace it back to the gun. Right. <clears throat> um, God, I hope they're okay. I Jesus. Know. If convicted on the attempted murder charge, Eaton faces up to life in prison. Federal prosecutors in Vermont are also investigating whether the shooting may have, may have been a hate crime. Yeah. Cause I think if it's a hate crime, they get more. Yeah. Which yeah. I mean, I, I don't understand how it could not be because yeah. at the end of the day, you have to look at the circumstances here. There were three guys that were visiting their their grandma's place right or one of their grandparents um to spend some time with them so that was going on at the same time you have like this random guy who doesn't know them right like like think of it like this like okay if somebody shot me and they realize that this person has no affiliation with me doesn't know me you know it's it's easier to kind of start to point towards well why the fuck are they shooting this person then yeah you know and it obviously it came down to like wh- what they were doing talking the, the mm-hmm, they were mm-hmm. speaking Arabic or Arabic or whatever <clears throat> Arabic Arabic thank you <laughs> um like it just it, it kind of you put the pieces together because like why else why is he fucking shooting these guys right like there's no yeah. rhyme or reason for yeah. it they were going for a, f- a walk exactly like, oh my god be crazy as but all. I mean it's the U S everyone shoots everybody so. You know, it's true. They have that. They could say like, "Oh, it's just another it's mass in, shooting." Situation. It's in self defense. Oh God. You know the hold and ha- hold and carry or whatever. Oh God. And the sad thing is, probably in in Vermont in that area, they've gun sales have gone up. Probably, yeah. Because yeah. everyone's like, "God, I need a yeah. gun now to protect myself." Oh 
God. But it's so stupid because this whole concept of like having a gun to protect yourself as well. Like if I'm walking down the street, right, and somebody guns me down, I, the chances of me actually getting my gun it's, out to protect myself is such a fucking flawed argument. It's not like I'm walking around <laughs> yeah. the city like this, like y'all, y'all going to try to shoot me. I'll shoot you first, bitch. Yeah. The better way to protect yourself would be to wear like a vest. Yeah. Like bulletproof a, vest. Exactly. That's the way to protect yourself. Exactly. Like, it doesn't make any sense. I know. Cause like, honestly, if, even if you had a gun in that situation, if somebody fucking shoots you and it fucking hits your heart or fucking, yeah. you know, you collapse, what are the chances that you're going to pull know. your gun out and be like self-defense? Well, the stars have to all align yeah. for it to actually happen like that. It's crazy to me. It's crazy. I know. Like, there's no reason for people to be carrying guns. I like, know. I know. <laughs> so that reminds me. So this mm. whole hate crime situation reminds me of a story of... So this one guy... Let me find the article. So basically, this guy, he actually got arrested mm. because basically... I think this was like New York or something. Let me find it. Oh, So basically, um, this guy went viral. <clears throat> because this guy was basically assaulting, like harassing this food vendor. Okay. Yeah. So I don't know what, I guess this food vendor was like Arabic or something. Um, and like he was just selling food. Okay. He's just like, has a fucking food, food truck, truck yeah. selling food. And this former Obama administration official. So like someone that's clearly kind of high up, mm. you know, like doing politics or whatever. He, basically starts like just like harassing this food vendor and it seems like he went multiple times mm. to the same food vendor because you can see him like wearing different clothes and the food vendors like like recording him yeah and this guy like he says like the most vile shit like i can't remember exactly what he said but he basically says stuff like oh let me see oh yeah so basically this guy do you want to bring him up or no, no, no? okay fine. This guy, he said something like, you support killing children. So maybe he said something about like Palestine before whatever. Mm. And then he's like, you support killing children. And then the vendor goes, and this is in the video. Vendor goes, you kill children, not me. And then this guy says, if we killed 4,000 Palestinian children, you know what? It wasn't enough. Like insanity. God damn. And he said something about how like Mohammed, like something about. Like, he basically says to me, like, oh, this is a free country unlike Egypt. Maybe this guy's from Egypt. Yeah. He basically keeps saying how, like, Egypt is not a free country. Just, like, very just bigoted statements. Mm. He said something like, oh, th I think this was the worst thing. He was like, he was like, oh, yeah, Mohammed raped his daughters. Like, do you rape your daughter? Like, shit like this. Fucking hell. Like, insane shit. And he keeps, he's like, can you please leave? Like, the guy's mm. like, you need to leave. And he's like, oh, I can stand here. This is a grown-ass, old-ass man mm. that's doing this shit. Anyway, he got arrested. And I don't know if he, it says, yeah, he was arrested. I don't know if, he, if he's been charged, mm. but because it was like all on video, um, he said, it says he pleaded, he's 64. Like, what are you doing? I know. Like you're like, go retire and yes, live your life. Exactly. Like exactly. 64 pleaded not guilty mm -hmm. Thursday to two counts of fourth degree hate crime and stalking and one count of second degree av aggravated harassment mm. so at least he got arrested people are so stupid though like do you remember when covid was going on and then all of a sudden oh, there was like a yeah. spike in racism against asians yeah so stupid and, the, and but the word like i mean it's bad anyway the worst thing is though of that whole situation is the asians that were being targeted were like old do you remember it was right, like a really yeah. old people like people in their like 70s and yeah. 80s were getting like pushed over and shit and yeah. like i was like this is horrible first so of all sad. Obviously, racism at any level is like horrible, but where it really bothers me even more so than like normal yeah. is anytime that you have like violence or racism or just like any nastiness towards like old, really old people yeah. and really young people. Like vulnerable people, exactly. essentially. Yeah. Essentially people that are vulnerable. Because I think exactly. to myself like, you know, anyway, it sucks. Like if someone was racist to like yeah. whoever, even someone my age, it still sucks. But I feel like we have a little bit more like we can kind of defend ourselves a little bit mm, better. Yeah. You know, it still sucks. But when it's someone like really old and people are like fucking pushing them in the street and shit, oh I'm my like, God, I'm I like, y'all need to stop. Like that's fucked I up. I know. What is wrong with people? I know. I'm like, like literally, like that could be your grandma. Like, would you go and fucking push your grandma? Oh God. And like that's another thing too. If someone pushes me and I fall over, yeah, yeah I might scrape my hand or something, right? An older person, they could break their hip. Like, mm -hmm. there's been situations where they just like f someone falls and they break their hip and they go to surgery and they're like yeah. out of commission for like four months. Like, yep. you fucking did that to somebody. 
Yeah, but like, they don't. When you don't see, when you're racist as fuck, you don't see them as mm, the same as you. This like is you true. see them as below, so they can't relate to thinking, "Oh, this could be my grandma. This could be my, you know." Yeah. So they're just thinking, "Oh, they're just like this is a problem with racism," because then you start seeing people like not as human. Yeah, and you then, see them as something yeah. else. Like, what the fuck is it's wrong with people? It's just crazy. I just, I don't, I don't get it. Like, I we're know. all people. And like, also, you, people. Like, you like live in the states. Like, that's what another thing that kills me. Not mm. that racism is okay anywhere. Yeah. But it's like. In other places where you don't, you're not subject to other races on right. a regular basis, there's a level of ignorance that I guess like, th- that I feel like, again, it doesn't excuse any of the right, racism, right, right. but I think like, there's almost like, like a lot of ignorance there, right? Racism is ignorance. Yes. But at the same time, it's like, but in like Canada and the US mm. where it is multicultural and there are people of all colors. Yeah. It's like, there's even less of an excuse. Not that there is ever an excuse. Yeah. But it's like you, like you've lived with people like Asians around you, Mm. black people around you, Muslims around you. Like you've lived with all these people around you this whole time. And all of a sudden now you're going to be this fucking, you know, piece of shit. Cause what, like what the fuck? What what new information did you get? Exactly. In the last week, that's because a, something happened in the Middle East. All of a sudden, you think you know everything. Yeah, that's actually a really good point because like I remember when I was like traveling naively because I've always lived in like Canada or been to the UK, right. you know, or you know, like, and I never really took for or appreciated the fact that what a melting pot that we are. Like literally mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. from a young age, I've been exposed Daniel, to cultures. We, we are a mosaic model. Sorry, mosaic, not America melting pot. America is a mul- melting pot. Right, right, right. Thank you very Sorry. much. Um, <laughs> but I, I never appreciated that before. And then I started traveling and I remember like my first backpacking trip was like going through Central America and stuff. And I have never felt more like a minority. Oh, yeah. Um, Because I remember like going around and I was just like, wow, like this is, it was kind of cool. Like, you know, there wasn't a lot of, it was like very unicultural. Right. And I feel like there's a lot of countries out there that are like that. Yeah, yeah, that totally, totally. Where, where, again, I don't, I don't condone racism or anything, but I kind of understand it a bit more if like you're in a society, like if I grew up in an all white society where I've never seen Asian people, never seen black people, and then all of a sudden I'm exposed to like, black and Asian people, yeah. there's going to be like an unconscious bias where I'm like, Ooh, like I don't know yeah. this person. Like this is so different than what I'm used to. Yeah. But like, we don't have that in the U S and Canada. Mm-hmm. So like these people that are like so belligerently racist in these yeah. countries, it's like you are an, you're a fucking idiot. I know. Well, and, and also I feel like a lot of the, uh, and not always, there's definitely hate crime, like racist hate crime everywhere. Mm. But a lot of the kind of racism that you see in those countries where they're not exposed to like, you know, Asian people or white people or whatever, it can be like, um, it's not necessarily like malicious always. It's Mm. more so like, oh, they just like really don't know shit. Uh, (laughs) um, But of course it can be malicious. But like here, when it happens like in North America, like like it feels malicious. Like it feels like gross. Like it feels like they don't like you. Or like in Australia as well. Oh, Yeah. Like outside the big cities in Australia, it's, it's like bad. It's bad. It's bad. I saw like a video. That's why I don't have an Australian accent. It's true. You? Your parents were I, like, no, it's too yeah, nice. My parents there. said, no, we can't make that our home. I know. It, it <laughs> sucks because like, you know, honestly, I've just been to Sydney. I think Sydney's an incredible mm. city. Like Melbourne as well. Like it, there's some really cool there spots. There are also a lot of Asians that live in uh in Australia. Oh yeah, well. a lot. Yeah. But like as soon as you leave those like right. big cities, it like becomes a different world. And like I've seen so many TikTok videos of like people like riding the local bus in the area. Yeah, yeah. And they're like one Asian person gets on or something. Really? And people are just like really like or one person is like crazy. Like I, I think I saw one video like many years ago yeah. of some like weird Aussie lady that was like yelling at this like Asian guy on mm. a bus. Yeah. <laughs> Why is always on a bus? I know, but I like, feel calm like the fuck down. Buses like bring out the worst in people. I was on a bus the other day and like this guy <laughs> This poor guy was like having a chat with the bus driver. He was like, uh, I think it was Chinese or something. Yeah. Having a nice chat with the bus driver. They were just chatting and stuff. And this woman was on there. And as she's getting off, she's like, you should just learn to shut the fuck up. Oh my God. And then she started like, and then everyone on the bus was like telling her to get off. They're just like, get off the bus. And she like finally got off the bus. And then she was like, fuck you, blah, (laughs) blah, blah. And starts yelling all these racial slurs. Um, And I was like, oh my God, to the Chinese guy? Yeah. I was like, what is going on? And even he was like, what is going on? Oh my God. Yeah. People need help. I know. Okay. Oh. It's crazy. It was, yeah, it's a little bit, a little bit too It's much. a lot. It's another tender, tender moment in our, uh, in our history. Mm-hmm. Gotta love it. God, gotta love, uh, the modern times. I know, oh God. I feel like, yeah, let's not, let's not go down this rabbit hole. Uh, guys. Oh God. Are you going to have a meltdown? I will. So okay. I think we should just leave on that positive note. All right. Note. Got, oh, <laughs> the very positive note. Yes. R- racism, hate crimes. Yeah. Gotta love it guys. Mm. Um, 
Anyway, yeah. <laughs> on that positive note. On that positive note, guys. Well, not really positive, but uh-huh. like we're leaving, we're leaving that story behind us now. Yes. Um, and yeah. Don't be a racist prick yes. is our message to you. That's the message of the podcast today. Mm-hmm. Um, if you guys aren't already, obviously check out our YouTube. Um, subscribe. Give this video a thumbs up. Um, leave some comments in the comment section. If you're watching or listening on your favorite podcast platform, don't forget to hit that follow. And then you get updated as soon as we post new episodes. Um, and also, obviously, check out our Patreon. Mm-hmm. Patreon.com slash The Savage Podcast. There's loads of exclusive content on there. You get the access to all of our previous exclusive episodes. Every episode is a, we get it a week before the public and it's all ad-free content. So, yeah. Yeah. Check it out, you guys. Thank you so much for listening and we'll talk to you guys next week. Bye. Bye.